Hey, a pleasant, happy day, everyone, as we are joined here to talk about the Eastern Conference and give that playoff preview in this edition of Rink Take. Let's go over all those series as we just went over the West, as I'm joined by the great E-Money again. I'll link the Western Conference video at the end of this one. If you want to check that out as well, we would really appreciate it. But now we're going to dive into the East, and we'll see if both of us end or end up pissing off the faithful of the great Maple Leafs nation, or oh, yeah. <laughs> if one of us ends up picking them over the Tampa Bay Lightning. But that is the series that kicks off at 7.30 this evening. Uh, actually, we could start because the 7 o'clock game is the Bruins and Hurricanes, so we'll keep Maple Leafs fans for a minute on the edge of their seats uh, with what we're going to pick. And we'll start with the Carolina Hurricanes versus the Boston Bruins series. Um which is the Canes are a great team, but this is because obviously the big bad Bruins are the team with the playoff experience that have been there, done that more in comparison to the Hurricanes. This is still in that facet, a, a, an interesting series. What's your take on this one? Um, My take on it is I think the Bruins and Panthers, or not Panthers, I think the Bruins and Hurricanes is going to be a really close, hard fought series. Um, we don't know how long Freddie Anderson is going to be out for. Um, they kind of seem to just keep politicking that. We know he's out game one. Um, it's, I think the Bruins made an announcement that all Mark's going to be their starter for right now, I guess, in the playoffs. I don't know if they're going to rotate it every other game, but, um, yeah, I had, a, I had a really hard time picking this series only because Freddie's missing. Now, Freddie Anderson, we're healthy and we're ready to go and, and was ready to go and everything, I probably would have picked Carolina. But also, too, I just get the feeling that not all four division winners are going to survive. That, like, rarely ever happens. Um, I think out of all of them, Carolina would be in the most danger just because they don't have that goal. I mean, like – um What's his face? Uh, Rand has been pretty good, but he he's just a backup, really. Um, I think the Bruins for right now would have the edge in goaltending until Freddie gets back, or if he comes back in the first round. So it, it's hard to say. I mean, Carolina's loaded just about everywhere. That top line's looking pretty good. Uh, Jarvis has been a pretty impressive rookie. Um, and even some of like the bottom bottom guys, too. Um, Derek Stefan at their third line center, Nina Nina Renner, their third line wing, Jasper Fast. I mean, the, the team is just loaded. Slavin, as I've said a thousand times, he's got to be the most underrated defenseman in the entire league. Um, him and D'Angelo have been a pretty good pair, but I, I don't know. I, I just, it's going to be close. And then Boston, you have that uh, Marshan, Bergeron, and Pasternak combination, which is just. Hard to top. Well, now uh, they've actually been using, which has spaced their lines out more. It's been Corey, I'm sorry, I'm looking at and now. Pasternak and then DeBrus Pasternak, uh, yeah, Pasternak has the gone second off round. ever since requesting that trade. And then to round out the season was great with Bergeron and Marshawn. Yeah. Uh, I, I keep forgetting that Pass is not in that top line, but I feel like they could tinker with it a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, Taylor, yeah. They could, they could move them up. Yeah, Taylor down. Hall's been good. Um, their big deadline acquisition, Hampus. I probably said that wrong, but Lindholm. Hampus Lindholm. Yeah. Is, is that how you pronounce his first name? Hampus? Hoppus Hampus. is how. Hampus. Some, uh, uh, oh, whatever. I suck at pronouncing names. But uh, people say it both ways that I listen to. Yeah. Them. And Charlie McAvoy is like one of the best defensemen in the world. That dude's a beast. Um, so I don't know. I think, I just think that without Freddie. Oh, I had Boston and six on my bracket. I might change that to seven. I'm going to say Boston and seven. Boston and seven. Okay. I mean, Boston, this is an interesting series because you have the first team in the Met, but it's a team that's a wild card team that the wild card team in the East was ridiculous this year because you don't normally see wild card teams as good as Boston that finished yep. with 107 damn points that are like that. Everybody in the East and, in the playoffs finished with 100 and, plus. Yeah, exactly. Um, and like they all deserve, so they deserve the prey. I think Boston's pretty good three deep, similar to how we said uh, 
the Blues have a pretty good three deep line. The third line depends on the youngster Trent Frederick that what he can do, but he's also been very good in the defensive zone and knocking guys off the puck. He's just hasn't been, I think, as much as they thought he would be offensively yet in this point of his career. But maybe uh, his uh, breaking out party will be in the postseason, and that would be big for them. Hoppus Lindholm's been good. Him with McAvoy, like you said, McAvoy's a great defenseman. For me, both of these teams play great defensively as well, similar to what I said about the Wild and Blues. That's why I think this series is going to be, you kind of hit on the head, what goaltender potentially blinks because both have good defenses, both have great offenses. I would argue the Hurricanes go deeper into the depth offense because they go four deep, where I wouldn't say the um, Bruins go completely four deep because Felino had a struggle season, uh, mm. no sick spin up and down, and Lazar was solid this year, but like, I would say with Kakaniemi, Martinook, and obviously Nakis, who is only on the fourth line because of the team he's on, like all those guys, that makes their line go four deep, where I would say they're a little bit deeper there. Their defense with Shea and Pesci is one of the better pairings. And then Cole's a perfect third pairing. Brendan Smith's been a nice surprise this year with how well he was able to play at the age of 33. And then you still got Ethan Bear in the back end as a depth guy now, who's it looks like he's going to be scratched for the first game. That is, if you want to add a little bit more offensive jam there, you could add him and a little bit more skating speed to your third pair, too. So, for me, the biggest key is Freddie, but I think Freddie's going to come back soon enough because right now it seems like they're only tripping about the beginning games. And I do think with how good of a defense the Hurricanes play, there's certain teams that, even though Ronch is a great backup and that's what he is other than years ago for the uh, Rangers when he stepped up as a starter, he, he, I think around this almost nothing's perfect, but like the way the Canes play defense is almost perfect. Like defense, and they also got Tony freaking D'Angelo to commit more to defense and still be a great offensive weapon. So there's that. I think all of that put together, um, it, it gives me them g- giving them the nod in six games because I believe their defense is going to be good enough that even if Ronta plays more like a backup than a starter, they'll be fine. Or if they have to go with the kid, uh, Kochekov, who's played great in three games, but he's a kid, like kind of like I said, yeah, he's an experience. Astros, you don't want to throw him Ron- in. But- Ronta's starting tonight. Yeah, Ronta, yeah, Ronta's definitely going to yeah. start, just like I would imagine Riddich would start for Nashville. But um, if those guys end up having to get thrown in, I'm more confident in the defense in front of the overall team defense, not just their defenseman, but overall team defense in front of Kachekov than I would be in front of Connor Ingram with Nashville. So I think that is the reason why I give the Hurricanes a nod because their team defense is just freakishly good. Where Bruins is also good, it's just they don't go four deep on their lines like the Canes do. And they, to me, don't necessarily have as deep of the defense either because Forbert's been great. Clifton's had a career year. But I would take the third pairing of the combined of both of the guys put together third pairing of Carolina still over that Boston third pairing. So all that put together. And the fact that they have, even though Ronch is not a starter, he is the experienced guy in this series. Both Linus Olmark and Jeremy Swayman don't have playoff experience. So the the both coming in cold in the playoffs. We'll have to see after they both had good regular seasons what they're able to do in the postseason. Yeah, that, that all that all makes sense. So should we uh, make the Maple Leafs fans upset next? Well, the jump, yeah. Now the jump would be into the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, the Toronto Maple Leafs series where we can go on that and you can talk about the two T teams and if you think Tampa's yeah, good win yeah. or the Maple Leafs there. I'll let you go into that one first. Yeah, I think uh, that's a really interesting series for the Eastern Conference because you have the back-to-back champs in Tampa Bay. Um, I was, believe it or not, ESPN was actually talking about playoff hockey today. Um, probably not as long as they would for NBA or NFL, but whatever. You can only, I don't know. You can only take what you get. But well, anyways, now they do it because they have it on their network. Well, yeah, they have. They have to. Yeah. And um, I forget who it was, but one of the guys on there was like, "Yeah, this is the best playoffs out of all sports." And I thought I was gonna like go into cardiac arrest. I was like, "Oh wow!" Someone on ESPN like actually said that. And he's not, it wasn't like Barry Melrose or like any specific hockey analyst. But anyways, not to go too deep into the ESPN rabbit hole. Um, 
This is interesting. If Tampa can get through, I'm not Tampa, if Toronto can magically get through the first round, that's a massive boost for them. Like it, it would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if Toronto somehow wins the first round and then goes all the way to win the cup, just because some teams just have to have that like hill to climb on. Um, so this is a tough task for Toronto. I mean, you have the back-to-back champs. Um, ESPN was mentioning, uh, I think Tampa won like two cups in the span of what was it like 21 20 months or something like that because of covid and oh yeah yeah it was a they, they, like that's crazy like they just go back to back like that quickly like the team it just seems like they haven't had that much room to rest um i, I mean both of these teams are good if you just take out the Stanley, the uh, first round curse for toronto i think tampa would have to have the edge on defense and goaltending anyway pretty much just about everywhere um, I mean, you, you got Victor Hedman still. You got Ryan McDonough still. Um, that, that defense is obviously incredible. Vasilevsky, in my opinion, is still the best goaltender in the entire world until proven otherwise. And then Sam Kuss has had a great year. Uh, points awesome. I mean, even Ross Kurt, uh, Colton as a third-line center. They have some nice depth right down the middle. You got Kucherov on the wing. I mean, they they got they pretty much have good everything. I like their fourth line a lot. They can bring some grit with Maroon and Perry on the wings there. Um, I mean, Toronto's good, but I think what we were talking about on here or um, a couple shows ago, I just don't trust Toronto's defense that that much to help them break through. Um, I mean, goaltending's not bad. We'll see how uh, Campbell can do. I see that Michael Bunting is the day to day. I would imagine he'd probably come back in there soon. He's been an awesome rookie, but it really just goes through Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. Um, Matthews had a terrific year of 60 goals, just absolute dynamite. But at the end of the day, it's death taxes and Toronto losing in game seven. So I'm going to go Tampa and seven on that one. Tampa and seven. Well, yeah, yeah, you have it going. So you have it being one of the best uh, series of the postseason where we had the Minnesota and St. Louis series in seven. That's the only one. Um, to I, have still, as a I still say Minnesota and St. Louis would be like the closest one, though. Like, I could see just about every game of Minnesota and St. Louis going into overtime. Like, it wouldn't surprise me at all. It, yeah, I don't know. But every game would probably just because of history surprise me. But, yeah, I could definitely see with how close every every game is definitely going to yeah. be. I think that's going to be a good series. But Tampa in seven, uh, I think that's a good pick for me. I, I do think something that the great uh, Pirlo Wisdom and I have still flyers, check out his channel, don't necessarily fully agree on with Toronto. I agree that they don't have guys that have proven they can be the playoff style step up in that guys necessarily. But if you – Look at the roster. The play style of Pierre Engvall should play to the playoffs. The dude's massive. Same goes with Comp, and same goes with, well, obviously, Nylander's a goal scorer that you hope would continue to score goals in the playoffs, yeah. who's been on that third line. Uh, when it comes to uh, Mikhaev, he's a guy that you think his size would play one of the playoffs. Obviously, Tavares, you expect good stuff from. And the first mm-hmm. line is, 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 is the first line. Uh, I think oh, yeah. foot uh, has been a good guy on both ends for them. So I think I think they have some of the guys there more than people give them credit for. Kyle Clifford also is not as valuable in the regular season as much as he might be for the postseason, having experience from his Kings days as well. So uh, I think they have a good mesh there. The problem I have with Toronto is they don't play the be- the best uh, defensive system either, where similar to their other Canadian counterpart at Edmonton we talked about in the West, they are a more offensive-driven team that does have better defense through and through, I think, in their forward core in some aspects, like the David um, Comps of the world and the Alexander Kerfoots, but they don't have the biggest overall best team defense compared to the Oilers. So for similar reasons I said to them, I don't think they're going to be the most successful in the postseason because you still got a guy in 
you have to see what Giordano can be. If he can, like, be great again and not just mm-hmm. this solid version of himself at 38. Lindgren's been great at a young age for them. TJ Brody has been good, but Muzzin actually has kind of had an offseason and hasn't been he- completely healthy. So you would need to see the perfect Jake Muzzin from him. So him coming back was huge for them. But are you going to see the full Jake Muzzin in the playoffs? If all that happens, I think they could beat Tampa Bay. It's just that's all stuff that has to be seen because these guys haven't proven it yet in the playoffs. But I do think they have guys that could play to that style more than people give them credit for. That's why I agree with you. I think it's going to go seven, but because – of the difference of goaltending, I would have to end the fact that the Maple Leafs don't have nearly as good of an overall team defense as the Tampa Bay Lightning, not even close. I think I would have to lean it towards the Lightning, but because of the fact that Campbell's healthy now, if he can stay healthy, I do think he'll play well. He's not going to uh, outmatch Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky's the best in the world, as you said, but he'll play well and keep them in game that their offense will be able to battle where I think it has a good chance to go seven. I was thinking of taking... Tampa in six just because of the team defense of Toronto. But I think from some of the stuff you said, um, it would make sense that I think this series could go seven. So I'll go with Tampa in seven also. But I do give Toronto a little bit more credit than I think some of my uh, favorite counterparts in the podcast and business kind of do with guys that can um, get actually the ante up their ante enough and kind of have that playoff snarl style play. We just have to see it. Where obviously the Maroons, the Corey Perrys, and all those guys, the Kalorns, they already proved they can do it. Where the well, Angles and hurt. others haven't necessarily proved they can do it. So that's why I take Tampa in seven as well. Their defense has had guys have career years also, like Jan Ruda pairing with Victor Hedman. McDonough's still a killer cat defenseman. He's just might not be the same Ryan McDonough of his prime, but he's still a great defenseman with Cernok. And they have a very deep defense, plus Vasilevsky, as long as he stays healthy. I think they are going to win this uh, series. So this is another one that uh, one of the uh, ones that we're actually in lockstep on. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that might be the only one that we, like, Agreed on just well in terms of like the number of games and everything, but anyways, um, so I'll just talk about my Capitals against the uh, Panthers just to knock that one out of the way. Um, I'm gonna definitely keep it real. I'm not expecting us to win. I'm not expecting much of us at all whatsoever. Um, our goaltending is not very good, and Florida has the best offense in the entire league. I mean, Huberdeau has been amazing. Barkov's been amazing. Declares had a career year. Sam Bennett, Claude Drew has been a good acquisition for them. Um, they, I mean, they're just, they're just they're a good team all over the place. Just about. Um, I see that Ekblad. I think he's day to day, or or no, it says, he's, it says he's a game time decision. But I can't imagine him going tonight. But he'll probably come back at some point in the series, which would be huge for them. Goodis has been good for for um, for them this year, and he of course he was crap for us. But anyways, um, I guess they're – oh, it says Goodis is out. Wait, why does it say it's out, but he has him in the – No, nah, he's not – on this, he's not out. Ekblad is the only one that's listed as out. On this one, Goodis isn't even – Okay. Ekblad I'm looking at the wrong as, Yeah, so he – Yeah, Ekblad will probably come back at some point in this series, I would imagine. They'll definitely need him in order to go on a long run, and it's hard to win without a number one defenseman. But against us and our mediocre go- goaltending, I'm glad Ovi's playing today which I'm like, well, yeah, Ovi's going to want to play because Ovi has heart. Like, I just feel like even if you break yeah. Ovi's legs, he'll still want to play. Um, but just because of, like, Ovi and, like, a couple of our veteran guys, um, we'll probably steal a game. I'm going to say Panthers in five just because of our goal tonight not being that good and their offense is just going to be way too much for us at the end of the day. So – I'm going to go with the Panthers unless we can find a way to stop that run and gun style, make it more physical with Ovi and Wilson and uh, Hathaway and some other guys. But I, I got to be realistic. So Panthers in five. Yeah, I think that's definitely a very realistic, uh, fair take, because we talked about the Capitals when we did our Eastern Conference um, percentages and how Pirlo had it when somebody commented on his video is exactly where we had it, where it was 10 percent. And um, yeah. To, and uh, a big part has nothing to do with the fact I think Laviolette's fine, and I think their team 
it's just, it's just aging. They're like like they've been there, done that. They've had still a mm-hmm. very good year to get to 100 points, but yeah. in this gauntlet of an Eastern Conference, they they just aren't the team to beat this year because they have guys like Oshie who's 35 now that maybe he can kick it back up a gear in the playoffs. Lars Elwer, who's still a good player at 32, but aging. You got Backstrom, who's at 34, still a good player, but didn't play all the games, wasn't fully healthy this year. So, like, you have all those things coming. But, obviously, I think the goaltender they have to ride with to have the best chance is Vitek Vanacek, because Sam Sonoff's been bad, bad this year. And I'm yeah. a goalie guy saying that, and I don't like saying that, but you have to be truthful when it's truthful, and he's been bad this year. So I'm definitely rolling with you. Panthers in five. They are so a great uh, – one of those great three-line teams like we've been talking about with other teams. They uh, personify that and also as deep as to be a four-line team uh, as well. So I think similar to – the Canes, how I said that about them, the Panthers have that too, where they have the Lombergs, Luster Rhinans, and Patrick Hornquist, who obviously has a lot of playoff experience yeah. on their fourth line. That's a very good fourth line. Uyghur's a great defenseman. Forsling Gudis has worked. Montour's had a great offensive year. Uh, Sherratt has been solid since going down there. and is a, more of an important pickup for the playoffs than the regular season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now it'll be interesting to see who gets subbed in when Ekblad doesn't go in the first couple of games. But I think the Panthers will be fine for round one here. Uh, I would definitely – that would be the one because I do think from the veteran status, um, I would say I would give the uh, Capitals one win because Ovi and Backstrom and all those cats and Kuznetsov, Orloff, um, Carson, they're going to be able to get them over the hump for one game. So I would yeah. definitely say it's the Panthers in uh, five. And then I think we got one more with uh, Rangers and Penguins there. That'll be a pretty exciting one. Yeah. Rangers and Penguins also has the potential as we talked about with um, the other series that we did, the blues and Minnesota in the Western Commons. Check that out as I'll link the Western Commons video at the end here. And please continue to subscribe to help us grow to the goal of 250 or more by the beginning of June. We really appreciate you guys' love and support this far. But we talked about that in that podcast. The Rangers and Penguins has the potential to be one of the closest series as well, depending on obviously the health of another netminder as well. But I'll let you dive into that. Um, yeah, so um, this one will be a good series. Pittsburgh hasn't won a series since the uh, Capitals ended the curse against them a couple of years ago. And ever, ever since then, they've gone one and done. But Pittsburgh does have a good team. I'm not denying it at all. I mean, Crosby's still pretty darn good. Jay Gensel had an awesome year. Um, Ricard, uh, Raquel was an awesome deadline pickup for them. Um, they, they, they got some good pieces. I mean, Latang's still relatively good and Dumoulin. I saw that Jari's out the first two games. And, I mean, the yeah. Smith is more of just a backup than a starter. And then Zucker's had a hard time getting healthy. He's day-to-day, at least what I'm looking on here on dailyfaceoff.com. Um, Rangers, I- I've been high on them since before the season started just because they hardly lost anybody in the off season because of how young their team is, and most of them were protected from the expansion draft automatically anyway. They got an actual coach in Galan instead of a college coach in uh, Dan Quinn. So, or wait, not Dan Quinn. Um, it says, no, it's, um, what's his name? The coach he fired last year. I'm thinking, I'm getting Dan Quinn mixed up from, like, the football coach Dan yeah. Quinn. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I'm fun, fun fact, Dan Quinn actually went to the same college I did but obviously graduated forever ago in like the early nineties. Um, totally random. But anyways, um, I forget the dude's name, but whatever, it doesn't matter. He got fired and they have a real coach in Gallant. Like if Gallant can take an expansion team to the cup, I think he can take this fast, young electric team relatively far. They're my dark horse in the East. Um, I actually am picking the Rangers to go David to the cup. Quinn. It was David Quinn. That's right. Oh, David Quinn. But who, he was the guy. Before. Oh, oh, okay. I got David and Dan. Okay. And yeah, Dan David Quinn, and Dan was the team. Yeah, Dan leaders. Quinn was the Falcons coach. Who yeah, blew I was going to say Pat Quinn, and that's somebody else. Yeah, we're <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> getting names mixed up. Yeah, so, David Quinn. That was his yeah, name. David yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm picking the Rangers to go to I the cop. certainly David Quinn was terrible. It's just the way the Rangers were. Like, I think he could be a good coach somewhere else. It's just you're coming from college to the NHL 
the Rangers are were ready to pounce, and Gallant's a coach that already showed when the team's ready oh, to yeah. pounce that yeah. he's the right. It was more of just yeah. who's the right fit for that time. Before. Yeah, I mean the Ra- the Rangers are good. I mean Kreider's had a good year. Uh, Savannah Jeff's been good. Panarin's been good. Cop was a good deadline pickup. Lafreniere is kicking in there a little bit. Um, he's been relatively good as well. Adam Fox, we know how much of a beast he is. Uh, Country Miller, Jacob Truba, and then of course Asurskin, who's just been an absolute freak of nature this year. Um, and also too, I have him going to the Cup because of how fast and young and the coaching's there. And there's always that dark horse that like gets far every single year. Like last year, it was the Canadians, and then the year before that, it was the Stars, and then. The year before that, it was the Blues, and then the year before that, it was it was the Capitals, and then um, Nashville went to the Cup as like a, I think they went to the Cup as like an eight seed or something. They were one like, of the low. I think it was it was the eighth or the seventh. It was one of the lowest seeds. Yeah, they were really, they were really low and and, and got there. And so I just feel like, the I just feel like there's like every yeah. I just feel like every year there's just that one team that like it's just a dark horse that just gets there and like the rangers have a lot of good pieces so i'm picking them to beat pittsburgh in six since i have them going to the cup but losing to the avalanche at the end okay yeah well that's obviously fair i think what happened to come to fruition which uh i'll take the bragging rights away from this from the rest of my uh steel flyers counterparts where some of them i think john was still high on pittsburgh because of their core but i know pirlo and steel weren't as high because I was a t- I was one of the ones that basically said as long as they got now Malkin wasn't even that healthy this year, but as long as they mm-hmm. have Malkin, Crosby, and Latang in that core together, and Yari's playing well, and that was was better than well this year when healthy, um, I think there's still a team in the players until that core's busted up, and then yeah. that that's what ended up becoming to fruition. They became a, a playoff team again, and they ended up being a very good team in the regular season to touch 103 points, but. They were not as good as the New York Rangers, who decided to expedite. Like they last year, sort of showing signs of moving the rebuild up quicker. So they bring in the pounce coach, obviously Gallant, and now they have him do exactly what he did with, like you were saying, Vegas in his first year, and really yep. make the most out of these guys. And you don't even have guys like Lafreniere playing to their full potential yet; they're just playing good. So oh, yeah, like yeah. Taco, has, both yeah, of those guys yeah. are brilliant players, not playing for their yep. full potential. Heidel, that line, uh, the the oldest guy on that line is twenty two. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it, that's so, insane. I so, mean, who's so, the oldest player on the Rangers? Kreider, maybe. Like, the oldest player, yeah, the oldest player on the Rangers that starts, like, if is in their starting lineup, is usually Chris Kreider, who's thirty one. Yeah. Other than, and, oh no no no! I actually scratch that. It's Ryan Reeves, but he's like the round and pounder defend the team guy. He's oh, I forgot, I forgot so they Ryan do have Reeves. Ryan Reeves. So Ryan Reeves on their fourth line, who's a perfect guy to have for the playoffs too. Yep. Uh, he would yep. be the older guy, and then obviously Justin Braun when he starts. Uh, he's also yeah. thirty five years of age. But, but I mean, for the most part, they're just loaded with with young weapons. Young stud, yeah. And, 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 and also too, let's not forget, last year they really weren't a bad team. I think overall they finished in the top 16, but with how the divisions were and how crazy the East was, I think that was called the East Division last year, they were just bounced yeah, out. Yeah, whatever it was called in the crazy COVID year. Yeah, they were Yeah, of, yeah. So, I mean. SOL. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. They were just SOL. That's pretty much all that it was. I mean, I I don't know. I just, I just have a feeling with this team. Um, I'm probably going to be one of the only few people in our bracket group. There's like 30 people in our bracket group, which is awesome. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I'm probably going to be one of the only ones that has the Rangers going to the cup, but I'm a Caps fan too. So it's not like I have any bias. Like, no, exactly. Like, I don't either. And I think they're a dark horse team because I'm a Flyers fan, but I mean, as covering the overall league for my channel and different stuff, yeah. I do, I like being as unbiased as possible. I think they're a great team. Uh, I, I, the only difference I have with you is because of the Yari effect. I think the Smith similar to Ronta is a perfect backup and has showed himself to be the perfect backup, yeah. but they don't have the same team defense. Their defense is performing fine with Dumoulin, the tank, Peterson, Marino, Matheson, and Rui. Right. But how's Matheson and Rui pairing going to pair in the regular season or in the postseason compared to regular season, I should say. Plus they don't have, they do have great overall line depth in their first four. My concern is just Pittsburgh's team defense isn't the sexiest compared to a team like Carolina, who's missing their starting goaltender for a game or two, and 
and uh, potentially longer that I think can stomach it easier because they have one of the best and actually the best graded defense in the league. Mm -hmm. But forget grades, just from watching, you can see that yeah. Pittsburgh has a good defense to a very good win. Uh, they're able to play their the best style of hockey, but it's not to the level of um, Carolina at all. And there's been games this year where you didn't wear – Tristan Yari is the main reason they won where Freddie's been great this year, but because of Carolina's defense, there hasn't been had to be as many games where you're like, oh, Freddie had to steal that game. So right. it's a difference of nature there where that's why I think they're not going to be able to stomach the starting goalie not being in as much. So the only difference I have between you is you had Rangers in six. I'm going to take the Rangers in five because it sounds like Yari might be because of the concern to Anderson to me sounds more like it's shorter term where Yari sounds like since they're already ruling him out for the first two Anderson they're just saying one it sounds like the Pens might be a little bit more concerned there and that gives me very much worry warts heading into the playoffs so I would say in, in five I would go with that because Sturkin is the Vezina we talked about it in our award show so yeah. that combined with the fact that their defense is ridiculous minus Patrick Nemeth, who's a give or take guy. Uh, but he's yeah. a guy that's also more valuable in the postseason, similar to Ben Sherrod, who's a big guy that not people have the puck than he ever is in the regular season. So right. we'll see what he can do as well. So I think their their team is set and poised to go on a run. I can't remember the exact percentage I gave the Rangers, but I do think they're set and poised to go on a run. So the only difference I have from you is Rangers in five compared to you taking the Rangers in six. Yeah, I mean, that, that's all very possible. And also, too, like, I just want to say the the reason why I'm so freaking excited for this playoffs, even though my caps will probably be bounced out early, this is the first normal playoffs that we'll have in three years. Like, we have the full excitement. Like, all the fans are going to be there. All the divisions are back to normal. All the matchups are back to, like, how they're normally uh, scheduled. It, it's just – Yeah, the current CBA. It's, it's going to be awesome. Like, it was weird watching playoff hockey without fans in the bubble. I was like, man, this is this is weird. It's not the same. And then last year you had, like, the different divisions and everything. And this year like, everything's just back to normal for the playoffs, and it's just going to be awesome. And I'm just incredibly excited. I'm ready for 7 o'clock p.m. Even though realistically they'll probably be 7 to 9, 7 15, because they always take freaking forever – to get the game started. I don't know why they do that, but it, it definitely pisses me off. No, they do. It takes a minute, but I'm very really excited for the playoffs. I'll be paying attention to closely um, oh, yeah. all of the games tomorrow more than tonight because people that are also into the ECHL and Kelly Cup playoffs and that are in the local area, the Philly area that watch the podcast, definitely come out to Reading to check out the game there. Um, but I thank you all for joining us. You can follow me at jjborick 26 on Twitter if you want to, and you can also please continue to subscribe down below to keep the channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. Enjoy the playoffs, everybody. The best time of the year for hockey fans is here. Peace out, everybody. Yeah. Stay oh, safe and enjoy your day.